Hello everyone and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon. Apparently we're getting the truth faster than we did during Karma's Road. So, let's see if it really is the truth about Ellie's heritage. In a monochrome world, working from the side through her lonely eyes, it reflects the ocean and stars. But her cry echoes around the simple loss of love in her heart, making this old fairy tale alive. In sorrow's tender embrace, this was never meant to happen. Day. The only reason you have to stay Hear me sing my song And just keep holding on Cinderella, why don't you stay with me tonight? We will dance until midnight comes and we could run away Oh, we will never ever be apart Set aside all your fears, this magic lives inside your heart I am here, would you want to stay with me tonight? Across the bridge of fantasy oh, All the pain and sadness that you feel Believe in me Hold me close and never let me go Come and stay with me forever The magic lives so long as I am here My only answer is silence I shift my gaze to Rod but he avoids my eyes What is going on? Princess, it is very likely that this witch in the palace is looking for you What? I cast a glamour on you a long time ago so that you could remain hidden from magical eyes. I did it to protect you, but this witch in question can see through the spell I've cast on you. It is my belief that they are actively looking for you. I close my eyes and massage the temples of my head as I feel a headache coming on. Wait, you said before that the witches want to see their curses unbroken, but this sounds as if they have another motive altogether. What reasons could they have for trailing me? The Tenor Brahm has been without a bearer for a long time, ever since the end of the war. A new bearer, however, will soon arise and the crystal is ready to support them. Some of the witches, the wicked ones, want to make sure that the Tenebrum continues to spread darkness even with this new bearer in charge. Okay, but what does that have to do with me? Oh, Ellie, you're so much smarter in Karma's route. They lower across their arms, her expression grim. The title of the bearer is passed down from one descendant to the next. Princess, the last Tenebrum bearer was the late Queen of Angeal, your mother. I feel my blood go cold. What? As you are the queen's daughter, you are the next heir. Come your 18th birthday, you inherit the title of Tenebrum Bearer. Mother? A witch? Impossible. Okay, there we go. Now this is the frightful Ellie we all came to hate in the beginning of the story. Why would you spout such lies? I narrowed my eyes at them, searching I narrow my eyes at them, searching for some hint that they are lying to me. Delorean Parfait never turns their sad eyes away from me. Rod glances at me briefly before turning away, looking uncomfortable. Hildir, your mother and I used to work together to maintain balance, but then the witch hunt drove her mad and turned her heart to ice. But she never used any magic, I would have known if she was a witch. It's possible that she did in the past, but then it seems she erased all your memories of her true identity. Delora was able to ascertain that most of your memories of her had been snatched away. Hildir needed you to remain obedient so that when you finally did inherit her role as a bearer, you would continue to do so as she wanted. My thoughts feel as if they are spinning endlessly on an axis. The real reason I cursed you was to see if you were truly capable of goodness, Princess. Hildur's influence clung to you even after her death, and we feared that you would continue her previous work. That Angeal might once again fall to darkness if you were not able to help the dark emotions in your heart. So then you cursed me because you were terrified of what I would do if I became the bearer as I was. That's fairly obvious, don't you think? My only answer is silence. Now I understand why the people hated me. It was because I am my mother's daughter. She came to accept this a lot faster than she did in Karma's route. In Karma's route, it took quite a long time. In this one, she just gladly accepted it. I cannot help but reach out to touch the pendants on my necklace as a feeling of dread washes over me. We know that there is goodness in you, princess. We only wanted you to realize it by breaking your curse. Parfait sighs, looking guilty. It was a selfish act on our part, I know. But we could not risk another great war. They believed that I would have plunged the world into a war. I turned to Rod who has yet to speak since the conversation started. Did you know about all of this? 
Everyone knows the story of the Tenebron witch and her daughter. Everyone except for me. I glanced down at my hands, suddenly feeling numb. I am a witch, and I will become the Tenebron's next bearer. Just the thought of it makes me sick. I think back to my childhood. I can still recollect the glares that everyone gave me when I was a child. They were scared of me because I was my mother's daughter. And what about the king? They didn't ever love me because I was the daughter of a witch. Now we all know that's not true. But if that was the case, if my mother was so wicked, then why did the king marry her in the first place? Hildur threatened to kill the woman that he loved if he did not marry her. She threatened to kill Ophelia. Ooh. So as you know, I'm gonna assume you all watch Karma's Route, so. So Ophelia is actually Gennaro's true love. So that's interesting. Ophelia, so the king has loved Ophelia from the very beginning? I clenched my hands into a tight fist. After mother died, he was able to reunite with his true love. And since then, he has treated Mela and Rod better than he has ever treated me, even though I am his daughter by blood. I want to feel angry about this revelation, but instead I feel a dreary emptiness inside of me. A heavy feeling begins to set on my chest, suffocating my heart. He never really loved me. Oh, really? Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at her face. Oh my god, this is actually new. I've never seen that face yet. Poor Ellie. Ellie? Rod's voice snaps me out of my thoughts, and that is when I realize that a stray tear has made down my cheek. Wow, it looked like a waterfall to me. I quickly wipe it away at the back of my hand, angering myself for showing weakness in front of them. You must be happy to see me like this. What? Your mother was made queen, and you and your sister became royals overnight. It's like something out of a fairy tale, isn't it? You thought you had a perfect life until I came back into it. I never asked for this to happen. I just wanted to. Rod suddenly moves his hand to Sebi's mouth, muffling whatever other words the plush was going to say for him. What is it you want to say, Rod? It's nothing. I can assure you, however, that the power that comes with the crown has always been irrelevant to my family and I. So stop assuming that everyone around you is after your title or your riches. Did your time with my sister not teach you anything? I am about to angrily retort when I suddenly stop, my heart sinking. I have already recognized that Mela is more complex than I thought she was, and she has also told me that she never wanted to be a princess. My mother wouldn't have married the king if my father were still here. The Lord looks between the two of us and sighs. Wait. Do we actually get to find out who Rod and Mello's father is? And here I thought your relationship had improved. Now it seems like it's back to square one. I cross my arms and turn away, annoyed. Do you have anything else to add, Parfait? If not, I would like to return to the palace. Princess. Stay vigilant and be careful about who you trust. Trust? How do you know whom I trust? What makes you even think I trust you? Ooh, that's sharp. The anger that I was expecting earlier suddenly rises to the surface. For all I know, Parfait and Dolores could be feeding me lies, playing with me the way Dolores did when she first cursed me. I don't expect you to believe what I've told you. Perhaps it was not yet the right time to reveal everything to you, but please, you need to be careful. I stand up and look at them, my arms now hang limply at my sides. How am I meant to trust anyone when all of you have been lying to me this entire time? Ellie. If you don't believe us, then try asking a king who Hildur truly is. I never even thought about asking a king about mother. Rod. You should watch your back too. It's possible that the switch in question could be plotting something against the royal family as well. They have been in the palace for a long time, after all. She looks at me, then at Ron, her expression somber. I won't be able to stay with you anymore. I had to pick up and leave a few days ago because I was certain he'd caught a trace of my magic. He probably already has. I understand. Anyway, Ellie is right to return to palace now. Someone may notice your absence if you're gone much longer. You two should leave. Let us know if you notice anything unusual. I will. We'll see you again soon, princess. Remember, stay vigilant. Wow, okay. So we have a little gap filling here. Hildur actually threatened to King Gennaro that he would kill Ophelia if she didn't marry him, thus gaining her the power of the royal family. Rather interesting. But then why, in fact, did she want a daughter? Oh, I know, she did explain it, didn't they? She wanted a daughter to continue her reign. Rod and I leave the march in silence. Here in the secret tunnels, we are suffocating under even more silence but still neither of us makes an effort to speak. I am still stuck inside my own mind, sifting through my troubled thoughts. I cannot reconcile the fact that the wicked witch who led the witches during the war was my mother. I did not even realize how many people hated my mother until after she had passed and they spoke about how cruel a queen she was. I never understood why since she has always been a perfect person in my eyes. I never connected my mother with Dana Ron Bearer, but what Parfait and Dolores just told me makes sense. Oh, she did come to accept it. Hmm, so it really was just slashing on anger. Was I living a lie all these years? A lie that my mother crafted so that I remained cold and bitter even after she passed away? And Dolores and Parfait say I am meant to inherit the power of the Tenebrama from my mother. I do not want that burden. 
I almost bumped the rod's back when he suddenly stops walking. He turns around and looks at me with a serious expression. I cannot help but feel judged beneath the weight of that gaze. If you're going to tell me that you never wanted me as your partner because my mother was a witch, then I wasn't going to say that. What? I won't lie, the first time I saw you I thought you were like your mother. You were cold, harsh, and selfish. I never want to have anything to do with you. That was why I was so against the partnership. But, you've changed. Oh my god, he's smiling. Rod's expression softens. As you and M have grown closer, I have seen that you are not like your mother. She speaks fondly of you, and I can tell she really enjoys your company. That's interesting. We always see the scowling Rod. Fascinating face. That's why, even if I do not have plans to break my curse, I will still do what I can to help you break yours. It's the least I can do as your partner. I stare at Rod in shock. This is the first time he has ever been so nice to me. Why are you staring at me like that? I'm only doing this because you're important to my sister. Rod turns away, his face beat red. Man, I wish you would let Sebi talk. I want to hear what Sebi has to say. Liar. Ha, thank you. <laughs> Rod reaches up to pinch Sebi's face. Ow! Let us compliment him. Who would have thought that you were actually capable of being nice? What? Was that supposed to be a compliment? Yes, you are always so grumpy. I don't even think I've seen a genuine smile on your face before. I can say the same for you. Birds of a feather flock together then. Rod stares at me, dumbfounded. I cannot help but smile a little at his expression. Whoa, do you really dislike the fact that we are so similar? Rod is still staring at me, wide-eyed. You just smiled. I, I did not. Rod thinks your smile is pretty. Ooh, nice one, Sebi. Ha, I do not. And we got a crystal. Sweet, things are working out so far. You two really are the same. I take a deep breath to calm the erratic beating of my heart. Anyway, I still want to help you with the curse, Rod. Why do you refuse to break it? Rod stares down at his feet, expression melancholy. You know how I said Rod doesn't want to break his curse because he and Yorika were in a relationship? I think there's more to it than that. I think it has something to do with his father now. Why would he mention his father, if his father had no place in the story? That's my take on it. I'm still not exactly certain whether or not I'm right, but I guess we'll see. Because I cannot. Rod stops and shakes his head. He says nothing else, and I do not problem anymore, especially not after seeing the distant look on his face. We walk through a corridor and back to our rooms after we say our goodbyes. I wonder what Rod was going to say. Hey look, she's so happy. Mother, look! Eleanor got me a lift. Lift? What am I talking about? Mother, look! Eleanor got me this gift. Eleanor? She's my maid and my friend. Princesses don't make friends with their servants. But she's really nice. She even taught me how to braid my hair like, those servants are only nice to you because you are the princess. They only pretend to be your friends so that they can have power over you. Wow, that's uh, that's one way to beat down a kid. Jeez. But Eleanor would never. What reason do I have to lie to you? I... When have I ever lied to you, little one? You have never lied to me. That is correct. Tomorrow, I will remedy this situation. I will hire a new maid. You are not to prevent this one, no matter what she says. Wow. She really did isolate Ellie, like seriously. When we went through Karma's Road, we got to see all the isolation that Hilda was doing for Ellie, and there's even more in this one. That's crazy. But Mother, are you arguing with me, Ellie? No, I am sorry, Mother. Wow. It has been days since Parfait and Dolores revealed my mother's true identity and the inevitable responsibility I am to have on my shoulders once I turn 18. Wait, didn't say when she turned 18 she would get the tenor brown? I have been trying to ask the King about Mother, but he is even busier these days than he was before, and it is impossible to find a single moment in his day to speak with him. The fact that I am made makes it even harder to garner his attention. When I am not on my break, I continue to do my duty serving Mela. Right now I am accompanying her as she practices her walk and posture. Ophelia has been helping her, pointing out any mistakes she finds. I know how hard this is, dear. I had to go through his training as well before I married the king. That's freaking weird. Like, royalty is weird. Like, all these customs and things. I personally find it weird. I know people who live this kind of life probably don't, but to me, it's weird. Mela allows her shoulders to slouch as she lets out an exasperated sigh. I've always hated these lessons, and I thought my posture was fine. This is supposed to refine it, and yet all these lessons I've been doing is hurting my back. Oh, Mela, you'll get the hang of this. You just need to keep practicing. But mother, I've had the same lesson before. Why must I do it again? Because you slouch when you walk, and that is unbecoming of a princess. Mela scowls on her mother, and Ophelia's frown falls away as she bursts into laughter. Mother, you're not helping. The atmosphere in the room is far from heavy as Mela and her mother continue to conduct her lessons. It is almost the exact opposite of the lessons I had with mother. Mother always got angry when I made even the smallest mistakes. 
I know this is hard, but as a crown princess, all eyes will be on you during the ball. Oh yeah, the ball! Wow, this is gonna be new. I wonder what's gonna happen. Obviously, Rod and Ellie are probably gonna do like their whole prince and princess dance thing, but what's gonna happen during that time? Will Vard make a reappearance? Actually, he probably will. The people there will judge any small mistakes you make, which is why you need to be in top form on that night. I know. Ophelia claps her hands. Alright, now to start again. Mela groans before heading to the far wall and straightening her back. She takes a deep breath, puts a book on her head, and begins to walk again. The book falls from her head on her third step. She sighs, moves back, and starts the process again. Now that us break Mela's concentration by speaking, we stand idly by and watch as she tries time and time again. I am surprised when Ophelia leans towards me and begins to whisper, Ellie, I've been to say this before, but I am grateful that you are friends with my daughter. Wow, this is definitely in contrast to Hildur and Ellie's relationship. I look at Ophelia's smiling face with surprise. I never agreed to be her friend. You are not against the princess making friends with her servants? Why would I be? I actually wish more of the staff here wouldn't be so uptight, since I would love for Mela to be on good terms with the people who serve her. Besides, social status is never an obstacle to friendship. Damn right. Freaking right. Ophelia shifts her gaze back to Mela, who is now picking up the book that has once again fallen from her head. No matter what occupation or status, a friend is always a friend. You've given Mela the courage she needs to face the many challenges she has ahead of her. In a way, you're like family, since you're always around us. Like family. Come what may, both family and friends are there for you and will accept you for who you are. Even before I was cursed, Mela was always trying to be my friend. That means she knew all along who my mother was and still wanted to be my friend. Oh wow, yeah, that's true actually. Why did I not realize that myself? The thought makes me remember what Parfait told me about Mother threatening to kill Ophelia if the king did not marry her. I turned to Ophelia, curious. Your Majesty, may I ask what you know about the late Queen's rule? Ophelia looks at me quizzically, so I quickly add a thoughtless lie. I was not on Angeal and have only heard stories. I just thought it was hard to believe, but with how peaceful things are in palace right now. The kingdom was a dark place back then. People lived in fear under her rule. The king had no real power over Angeal. The witches had free reign over the kingdom. They cast a fairy tale curse incessantly and on a whim. We barely left our houses in fear of becoming cursed. Mother's reign was that terrible? Wow. The king still blames himself for the darkness that befell Angeal during that time. Oh, that must. This must be the reason why he's so intent on bringing goodness to everybody, no matter what. This is why he works day in and out to. St Pfft, okay. Basically, every time I come up with like an idea, they always verify it in the next sentence. This is why he works day in and out to stabilize the country and to put smiles on everyone's faces. I remember how long ago how he told me one of the reasons he would always continue to work hard for his kingdom was because he wanted to make a brighter tomorrow for his child. Wait a minute, a brighter tomorrow for his child? Is he speaking about Ellie or was that before he had a child? Or before he had Ellie? Ophelia looks confused for a few moments, then brushes off the awkwardness with a small chuckle. Wait, that's probably a memory from before Ellie was cursed. Because child and children are obviously plural and singular, right? Hmm, so he can't hide emotions. Interesting. He helps the family in his own way. Silence. Is it possible that he said that with me in mind, and Ophelia slip up? But then maybe he was always referring to Mel and Rod. But child, though. Mel and Rod are siblings. So child is one. Ellie is one. The kingdom's come a long way since then, hasn't it? There are still witches here and there, but most of them don't bother others. I pray that the peace we're experiencing right now will last. I see. Thank you for telling me. It is a bit of a dreary topic, but I'm happy to have helped. If you need anything else, please don't hesitate to call upon me. I know it may not be a traditional protocol for a queen, but then I do not consider myself a typical queen. I try my best to listen to everyone here regardless of what their title or name might be. I can only nod at her in response. Princess or maid, the way Ophelia has treated me has never changed. She has always treated me with kindness, regardless of who I am. I never saw it before because I was always so distant from everyone, but now I see that Ophelia treats everyone here with kindness, regardless of social status. I was always frustrated by the servants when they compared Ophelia to mother, saying she was superior. But now, I think I understand why they would make such comparisons. Oh, darkness. Let's cue some villains. Mela dismisses me after my lessons, and I begin to head immediately back to my room. I have just turned a corner when I notice Sir Alcaster standing before me scowling. Ha! I knew it, there was a villain. Watch where you're going, child. I quickly avert my gaze, not wanting a confrontation. He always looks at me so strangely, almost like he can see into my mind. Or is trying to. My apologies, Sir Alcaster. 
Sir Alcaster nods his head at me stiffly before walking off. Why does he hate Ellie? Like, he definitely has his memories erased. He's not a witch, he's just a regular guy. Why does he hate Ellie so much? You are pardoned, princess. What? Wait, no, he doesn't- No! Oh wait, did he figure it out because of Mithros? Oh god, this sprout is a little confusing. I turn to stare at him, but he has already turned a corner. My blood becomes cold. Was that just a slip of the tongue? But how else could he know that I am a princess? Is it possible that he is cursed? No, somehow that does not seem right. But if he doesn't have the fairy tale curse, could he be the witch that Delora warned me about? What reason would he have for unveiling his identity then? Unless he just wants to intimidate me further. Wait a minute. Hmm, so if we really think about this, we know in Karma's route that Sir Alcaster figured out who Ellie was thanks to Sir Mithros's, um, I guess investigation or something like that. Maybe Mithros let him figure it out, and when Ellie came to the palace, Mithros probably knew Alcaster would call Ellie Princess, and because nobody would know who Ellie actually was, the identity of the witch would probably be put onto Alcaster even though he figured it out himself. It occurs to me that Fritz still remembers who I am. And another one, we definitely know Fritz is cursed, but how and why and... and what? <laughs> Just too confusing. Fritz is confusing. Did he tell his father about me? Now I'm even more confused about whom I should trust. Ellie? I jump when I hear Rod call me. His expression slowly creases with something that looks like worry. You're pale. Did something happen? Would he believe me if I told him? You know what? We're gonna trust Rod because we don't want to be an ice princess anymore. We, know we want to thaw Ellie's heart as quickly as possible. Sir Alcaster knows I am the princess. Do you think he's the witch Dolor was talking about? I whisper the words to him, and he responds by raising eyebrows, looking surprised. What makes you say that? This isn't just because of the standoffish way he acts, is it? You don't believe me. Damn it, Rod. Rod sighs. I never said that I didn't. It's just that we can't blindly accuse anyone without any real proof. Rod stares at me for a few moments, then closes his eyes, his eyebrows slightly furled with thought. Sir Fitzgerald also remembers who you are. I do not want to be so suspicious of Fritz, but I don't think blindly trusting him would be right either, given these circumstances. You know, Ellie didn't actually mention that Sir Alcaster called Ellie the princess. You need to stay vigilant around him. If anything happens, you can come talk to me about it. You're worried about me. Rod averts his gaze from me. Of course I am. Wow, he actually admitted it. Wow, you're actually being honest. Thanks, Sebi, for repeating what I said. <laughs> what? Rod glares at Sebi for pinching his cheek. Anyway, I must leave now. I have a dance to practice for. Dance? But you already know how to dance. What do you have left to practice? Rod does not answer and only walks away. I decide to follow after him. Oh, we're gonna practice with Rod again? Why did you follow me? I shrug. I want to see you practice. To be honest, I want to see him dance. I really know that Mello is very clumsy when it comes to dancing, but besides the one practice with Mello, I have never seen Rod dance. Mello always gloats on his behalf, but I've yet to witness Rod's supposed talent with my own eyes. Our dance together was so short, I barely had any time to judge him. I do not practice with an audience. Why? Is my preference. Rod is easily embarrassed. Nice one. Rod groans and pinches one of Sebi's cheeks, glowering. Sorry. Rod reluctantly releases the bunny with a sigh. I notice you have been talking more lately, Sebi. Oh, that's because Rod here has been saying things that contradict what he thinks or feels. Sebi makes a sound of defeat as Rod once again pinches one of his cheeks. Silence. Ooh, Ellie's smiling. Rod stares at me with wide eyes and I stare back, beginning to panic. W what is wrong? You smiled again. I put a hand to my mouth, flushing. I was smiling again. I never even noticed. It was a pretty smile, princess. Right, Rod? Damn it, Rod, just say it already. Say you're falling for Ellie, you crushy person, you. Rod quickly turns away, cheeks slightly pink. I need to practice now, so I would appreciate you leaving. He did not even command me to leave. What a surprise. Mela said you were a really good dancer. I want to see with my own eyes. Why? So you can judge me? Uh, let's, let's chide him on a bit. The scowl on Rod's face deepens. I almost smirk. Maybe he's reluctant to show me, but Rod is also full of pride. He's more likely to show me if I pose a challenge. He didn't even answer a question. And are you underestimating my dancing? The others may have forgotten, but you still remember, do you not? I am the princess, and I was taught by the kingdom's best instructor. I say the words of pride, and I notice Rod's lips twitch in response. It actually makes me feel accomplished to get under Rod's skin when he's usually the one getting under mine. Having the best instructor does not automatically make you the best dancer. I am pretty confident with my own skills. Say what you want, but I will refuse to believe you without any proof. I still say that I am a better dancer than you are. Hey, chiding on was the right answer. Sweet. Ross says forward and pulls me suddenly into his arms, taking me by surprise. He looks at me, clearly determined. 
Fine then, you'll have your proof. I'll make you swallow those words with this dance. We shall see. Rod starts leading the dance. He glides us into the imaginary rhythm of a waltz. Even without the music, I am able to count the steps in my head as I follow his lead. This is different from that short dance we showed Mela. Rod's movements are graceful, his touch gentle as he leads me to an underarm twirl. Rawr. Hello. When I come to face him once again, I notice the gentle way he stares at me. His usual hardness of his expression is gone, melted into something relaxed. I find myself staring back at him, looking into his eyes. Perhaps Rod does have some gentleness to him. Our gaze does not break as he twirls me. You have beautiful eyes. Ooh, charmer. Rod's eyes widen as soon as mine do. He abruptly lets go of my hands and steps back. I can only stare at him with my face warm. Ha, <laughs> you idiot. It wasn't me this time. He let his emotions show. Very nice. That was more than just a thought, I swear. Silence. Rod says nothing, though his cheeks continue dark with embarrassment. Oh my. Rod and I turn to look at Mela, who's hovering by the door. Excuse me. Haha, <laughs> Mela's spying. I like her. Rod quickly walks through the doorway and out into our hallway, leaving Mela and I alone in the room. What just happened? That was a wonderful dance, Ellie. You were watching? I only just saw the last few minutes, but you know, the two of you really did look like a couple. It was sweet. Ah. Uh, a couple? Oh, you're blushing. I put a hand to my cheek and turn away with a scowl. I am not. Besides, whatever just happened was embarrassing. Do you like Rod? I stare at her. I do not. Also, you're forgetting that I am a maid who could not be with a prince even if I wanted to. He is grumpy and cold, and even though we are not blood related, he is still my stepbrother. If only Mela realized how crazy her words were in the light of the truth. Mela suddenly looks starry eyed as she giggles at me. Love knows no boundaries, dear Ellie. Besides, he seems to like you. Your brother hates me. Rod. Can be a contradiction sometimes. Sometimes he says the opposite of what he feels. It's only when you get to know him as well as I do that you realize what his truths are. I cannot help but think of Sebi, who always speaks Rod's thoughts aloud when they are contradictory. He was always so mean to Bjorka when we were young. He would always bully her for being a crybaby, even though he cried far more often. But then I realized that he treated her more special than he did anyone else. Back then, I knew that he liked her. I thought that one day the two of them might even grow to love each other, but... Mela lets out a long sigh as she directs her attention out the window. <gasps> Are we actually going to know his... Ah, uh, no. Let's not get our hopes up here. There's no way we're going to know why Rod was cursed until near the end of the story. His attitude towards her has changed ever since he was cursed. Then he grew even more distant when Bjorko found a lover. Is that the reason why you have been going to the toy shop with Prince Rod? Because you want to bring them back together? Mela nods. The three of us were best friends. The three musketeers. It's not the same with Elrod. I keep on asking what's wrong, but he refuses to tell me. He's always been stubborn, but it's not like him to keep secrets. It's really frustrating because I have no idea what I should do to help him. I thought he was just being stubborn with me, but apparently no amount of prodding, even from his own family, will make him budge. Why is he being so difficult? I hope you do not mind me asking. But what do you know about his curse? Mela stares at me for a few moments for nodding. You're my friend, Ellie, and I know that I can confide in you. I know that sometimes I'm not trusting enough, but I think Mel is still far too trusting. Will he know that he has the mermaid's curse? I've read the story so many times, hoping that I can figure out some way to break his curse. I think back and realize that I actually need to read the beginning of The Little Mermaid a long time ago, but I didn't have the chance to finish it because I was caught by Mother. The Little Mermaid is about a mermaid who trades her voice for legs, right? Yes, she does it so she can be with her prince. Rod's voice was taken away, but I'm sure that he was given something in exchange. I've heard that the curses are derived from the original tales, but that they are twisted in some way to fit the format of curse. I nod slowly, thoughtfully. I have a strong feeling that Rod's curse is related to Bjorka, but I cannot draw the connection. But still, Bjorka might be the key to understanding his curse. If Rod will not divulge anything, the next best chance we have of understanding his curse might be going through Bjorka. Hmm, looks like chapter's over. Chapter 7, Be Careful What You Wish For. I wonder. Hey, you remember how I was actually thinking about what happened to his father? What if the trade had to do with his father? Like he had to trade his father for something because he hated him. Something like that. I don't know. I'm not exactly certain. But then what would he get in return for trading his father? And just just remember everyone, I'm just guessing here. It's like a hypothesis. Anyways, that's the end of chapter 6. This is a fairly interesting chapter. Alright everyone, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, then go ahead and click that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be notified when the next episode comes out. And if you know anyone who would enjoy these kind of videos, then go ahead and share it with them. 
Otherwise, everyone, I'll see you all in Chapter 7 of Cinderella Phenomenon. Have yourselves a great day.